So welcome back to Dutch Air Builds. My name is Jerome. This is episode number five on the ignition and car problems uh, with the Honda CX500. Not the one behind me, the one next in to me in the shed. It has been a struggle, this video. I had so much footage on that thing. Uh, it's taken me forever to get this thing running and it will run and you will see that in this video. This is the final video on that car problem. Thank God, thank God. I promise. It's taken me forever, so I want to thank you for sticking by, sticking with me, um, and thank you, if you haven't already, for subscribing to the channel. That really helps out. So yeah, I left you in episode number four uh, with a running engine uh, and got spark back, but it wasn't really running as it should. So we're going to continue from there and then see how it pans out. And before we continue, I want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please, please do. Uh, if you haven't bought a ticket for the Scottish Michael Motorcycle Show uh, in March on 2023, please do. Uh, you can see me uh, there and a lot of other YouTubers. Sugarly Sheds, um, Brickhouse Bills, Kilter Bushido, NWT, JD with his uh, Mushashi bike. Strewn from Remotorcycle. Jonathan Hall, lots of people, uh, you all know them from uh, from the internet. Um, yeah. Lots of people, go there and for now, watch this video and I will see you at the end. And the fuel is coming out, squirting out from that little nozzle over there. And let's see, no quick enough. Not okay. And the other one is dripping as well, look at that. There's fuel everywhere. It's squirting. Carbs overflowing, like you saw. Um, I really don't know why. It's it's bound to be the um, the floats. And I've already changed them. I had these in. These were like replicas. These two. Um, they worked fine in the other carb, but for some reason this is is flowing. So um, um, it's got to be a float issue. So what I'm going to do, uh, somebody recommended it to me, which is smart, but it could be a bit messy. She's going to hook up some fuel to this fuel line and open the tap. Now the fuel is going to come running out, but I can check if this actually closes, because if it doesn't, then that's a problem. So when I manually push this in a, as far as it can go and it doesn't close it, then there's some, some sort of problem with the float needle and I can check it on both sides. So. I'm just going to do that. I don't know if that's going to work, but it's going to eliminate uh, a few choices, I guess. So I'm going to hook up a fuel line here, get a tray to uh, catch all the uh, the fuel that's going to run over, and uh, let's see if that works. Pretty weird. Shame is that the engine was when I just when it ran over. I just started the engine anyway. ran fine better than the other one even on low rpms with a cold engine so um and that way i've got some progress the only thing i need to do is make sure it stops getting fuel as soon as it stops running so um i'm going forward but a step backwards again as usual the carbs hooked up so i think it's going to be really messy but it's the only way to do this i think so we're looking for us to close this so Fuel should stop um, coming down here. And the same on the other side. All right, let's see. It should run quite quickly. So that works. So it's clearly a float problem because there's nothing coming through right now. So when I close it, uh, they actually do work. So internally, there's nothing wrong with this carp. The set's clear. So it's definitely a float, pro a float problem. But I did change the float needles um, prior to this test. And I changed the floats as well. 
So I guess I guess we could give it a try now. Um, close them up. Again, now put the, the float balls back on uh, with the seals, close it up, and then test it on the bench, see if it floats over like it did before, or that I've actually done something good. <laughs> Okay, so another moment of truth, one of many. Um, opening the fuel, checking for leaks. Here we go. Living in fear. Nothing coming from those. Nothing over here. Nothing squirting. Press pop. Squirt, squirt! Hide. Let's try. Yes, I'm good. It is pretty late night. Half past one, as you can see. But I want to give it a go. I've been waiting so long. Let's see what she does. Vacuum leak. So I hit a little puff every time. I don't know if you could hear it on, on tape. But I see, I could see stuff every now and again coming out of here. So I haven't gotten good uh, over here. Sorry, between the car and this intake. So there was like little puffs coming out. So. I haven't got a good connection here, so I need to fix that. Okay, so another attempt. I've had the carbs off again. I cleaned them out completely again. There was some debris in there. And I actually swapped out the ultrasonically cleaned uh, parts from the other one. And I'm just going to... I really hope this works. So before I started, the problem was that it was popping. So let's see what it does now. switch
So I'm not really sure what's going on. There's still that weird popping sound you hear. I still think it's something to do with the uh, vacuum for some reason. On this side, you can hear it popping every now and again. So I'm just gonna fiddle with that for a bit. So it's idling pretty nice actually right now. so intense. I feel more powerful than a lesbian's crotch. Oh, sorry, ma'am. We don't valet motorcycles. <laughs> don't need to. Okay, so I got the, uh, the carb out, um, take it apart, um, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, put it back in. So the ultrasonic cleaner is uh, filled up with uh, hot water. Thanks, Dennis. It is nearly on temperature. I've got about, I've set it to 85 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm going to do it for 10 minutes. Um, and of course I need to take the carbs apart. I take out the rubber parts as much as I can. And I'm going to use this stuff, which is called Ticopur OS33, and I'm going to do uh, the maximum dosage, which is 5% for about 10 minutes. Uh, chuck this in, get things, this thing torn apart, and put it in these nice baskets, and then we're good to go.
Okay, here we go. Later. These are now completely, completely clean, refurbished, new washers, stuff, thingies, whatever. This thing is perfect. Let's put it on the bike. All right, so I have to say, um, I'm actually kind of nervous, but what's been happening, as soon as I stopped the bike, I um, closed the fuel tap, keep the engine running, and then it'll eat away all the uh, fuel from the carb so there will won't be any residue left but every time I restart the bike and open the fuel tap after it's been sitting for a while it tends to leak so let's see if it happens now I've actually kind of tapped the um, the carb a bit to stop that from happening I think because probably the floats are stuck but I'll know soon enough takes a while so it starts leaking it should start leaking about now that's good took it for a test run and it runs really nice I love it it's pulling strong not like it did before so I mounted the GoPro um, and I'm gonna have a ride
So that is the carbs done and spark done. Actually had a ride on the Honda and it rides perfectly. Now, in conclusion, the problems with the ignition and the carb were basically uh, the carb body, for some reason, it closed the gas valves inside uh, as soon as the RPMs were down. It was like a pressure problem, something. When it changed the body out, just the body, it got fixed and it disappeared. And then it was all just fine tuning. Um, same with the leaks. It was like um, float needles not working properly. Maybe I made some mistakes. Not being clean, so the ultrasonic cleaner is absolutely vital, I think, uh, for this. Um, I had, of course, a float ball that was leaking as well, which I found out later. Um, so yeah, a lot of things. I learned a lot. I've taken that car apart at least 50 times, I think. So yeah, uh, with the ignition, it was coils, I think, at some point, and didn't ki kind of got that in the video. I did post it on Instagram. Um, you can follow me here but uh yeah the coils at some point it was running on one cylinder and probably i had some problems there as well but for some reason um just checking everything making sure all the cables are clean and well connected stuff like that um it's running and it runs like a dream right now and it's lovely to ride so really enjoying it still got a few small videos for you on the CX um, I did the brakes as well uh, I had to change the exhaust so I'll do that in the video maybe I'll probably put that in the video um, and just go through all the things I've done on it from the moment I bought it until this point right now so yeah thanks for watching please subscribe see you in the next one I've got so much more videos coming oh, so much more videos coming on this CX, on the GS Mark II, which is actually, I've got it painted right now behind you. It's in a black primer. Uh, it looks really cool. So I'm gonna work on that, get the X21 in there. Um, finally finish that bike. So yeah, I've got lots of videos coming. So enjoy it and see you there.